Episode 8. Let's look at springs. I'll try not to let this one get too dry, but no promises. So far we've tried to create an electric piano that is cheap, easy to make, and easy to get parts for. Almost all choices has taken us to follow a very Fender Rhodes inspired piano. There are a couple of reasons for this. I know this piano well. It's a beautiful piece of design allowing for simple components to perform well, and in my opinion, the Fender design approach matches quite closely to our design goals. So I'm going to look at the springs that are inside the Fender Rhodes piano and try and understand how these help the piano to function the way it needs to. So the large springs that are included in the piano are the ones that support the tone generator assemblies. These provide a mechanical separation between the vibrating tone generator and the harp. This allows the energy that is given to the tone generator to stay within the tone generator for longer, essentially more sustain and less interference from natural frequencies from other notes and parts of the harp. You also allow the height and escapement of the tone generator and the tines to be controlled by adjusting the screws and setting these heights independently. So one downside is that when you change the height of a spring, the force it exerts also changes. Therefore, if using these springs to control other parameters of the pianos, this will change how separated the tone generators are from the harp. I've removed a sample of springs across the piano and taken measurements and what I can gather is the original springs of my piano are all the same size. I've measured the gauge of wire and it's 1mm OD. I don't have any of that available right now, but I do have some 0.85mm OD. So I'm going to create some slightly longer springs of thinner wire. Hopefully this doesn't change how it functions. We can purchase springs but we'll struggle to get the right size and force needed when looking for just standard springs that we find online. Obviously we could use vendors and the work that goes into the replacement springs and parts is unreal, but for an actual vintage instrument, use the best parts available. We can create our own springs and we can have increased control. We can play around to see how different springs can make different changes to how the piano operates. So you know what we're gonna do. We're gonna try and make our own. I've never tried to make my own springs before, but I have researched it. Simply, we need some high tensile wire. Music wire tends to work quite well. A mandrill, which is something we're going to form the metal wire around to create the shape of the spring. We need some simple pliers. We've got some needle nose pliers and some snips. And I think that's all the tools we're going to need. I've got a 5mm Allen key that I'm going to use to be the mandrill for the tone generator springs. I've played with this and this gives us approximately a similar size spring of what we find on the Fender Rhodes. So I've cut a piece of wire to approximately 30 centimetres long. I'm going to use the needle nose pliers and create a little hook at the end and then bend this round and this creates a little feature that locks it onto the Allen key stopping it rotating. So I'll put this on the Allen key and then I'll just start wrapping it around. I'm trying to control the pitch as well as I can. Ideally we'd have a rig to do this a lot better but if we're only doing a short run this will do for now and it should highlight that it is possible to make your own springs. Okay, so now we've created the shape, we just need to trim the end. And there we go, we've got a spring. Isn't it beautiful? Okay, so let's move to the other type of springs that are also on the piano. Next we've got tuning springs. So on each time there's a spring of varying sizes depending on the position of the keyboard. So this spring has two uses. The first one is it's a mass at the end that helps regulate the oscillation mode. The other use is the spring can be used to slide up and down the time 
and this allows the tuning of each note and time to be calibrated to the required pitch. It's going to be a little bit more complicated to make this one, as it needs to be bent round a much smaller mandrel. The springs on a Fender Rhodes piano feature a bend halfway along the spring. This is to create a little bit of force that holds the spring in position once it's been set there. If the spring was too loose it would rattle around in the time it would lose some energy and it wouldn't be very pleasant to hear. So once more I'm going to take the needle nose pliers and create a little feature at one end. This is to slide down onto a tine. And we're going to use a tine, this is an old one, to be our mandrel. What we're going to do now, with sort of a little bit of force, is start wrapping the music wire around the tine. And my goal here is to make it as long as possible and then we can chop this one spring into many depending on how long it gets. But yeah, just trying to keep this, the windings as neat and as close to together as possible and that should give us something that's as close to the original design. So yeah, we've got a nice little run there. I'm going to clip it off and then we can cut this into lengths. And next we just need to put a little bend in the spring. So I'm going to use the snips but not actually do a cut, just create that little bend. That seemed quite simple. Um, it's probably quite a basic little episode this one. It's just me sat at a desk bending some wire around stuff. But it all builds up into the big picture of what the piano is going to look like and how it's going to function. Um, I hope the next episode we start looking at a case and laying stuff out, but we'll see. And yeah, just thank you for everyone for following and liking. And I hope you, uh, if you've got any ideas, to chip in, throw the, throw, throw it in the center. And until uh, next time, thank you.